The Panzer IV would become the workhorse of the German war machine during the Second World War. Not only was it used from the first days to the last, it was also the most widely produced tank, with nearly 9,000 being manufactured. It was often the tank of choice by many of the elite Panzer units, such as the Waffen-SS. Its appearance and features would change as the war progressed, but for the most part, it retained all its original features. It would also amass a large kill count against various different Allied tanks. So, was the Panzer IV the best tank of the war? In today's video, we take a look at this tank and its impact on World War II. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit the subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. To understand the origins of the Panzer IV, we have to rewind to the end of the First World War. The signing of the Versailles Treaty severely restricted Germany's ability to have a functioning military. For many years after, the treaty's outlines were followed. That was until a certain man came to power. Hitler's decision to defy the treaty would be dealt with in secret, and one of the first things was to create tanks. Disguised as experimental light and heavy tractors, the chassis of these would become the Panzers I-4. The first Panzer IV prototype was created in 1936. It proved itself to be an impressive vehicle during the trials, and would prompt the go-ahead for more to be manufactured. Now the Panzer IV was created alongside the Panzer III, with the III taking more of an anti-tank role, and the IV used for infantry support to take out enemy fortifications or artillery positions. But the IV's larger hull and turret, coupled with its reliability and ease of maintenance, caused its favouritism with many troops over the III. Asfrung A, or Mark A, was the first Panzer IV model, of which only around 35 were created. Its features included a gasoline Maybach 250 horsepower engine, capable of reaching a top speed of 32 kilometers an hour. The operational range was around 235 kilometers. The frontal armor was a mere 14 millimeters on the hull and 20 millimeters on the turret. Its main armament was a 75mm short barrel cannon, with the short barrel being a significant disadvantage for engaging targets at distance. Two MG34s completed the armament, with one in the front hull and one coaxial. It contained a crew of five, that being a commander, gunner, loader, driver and radio operator who also doubled as a machine gunner. Around the tank were exits for all five men, which were next to their seated position. This a feature that most tanks in the war lacked. The B version would see an improved 300 horsepower engine, taking the top speed up to 39 kilometers an hour. Frontal armor was increased to 30 millimeters and 15 millimeters on the rest of the tank. The other improvement was in the cupola. This allowed for the commander to have a 360 degree view of the battlefield through slits in the armour, without the need to expose himself to enemy fire. Again, only a small run of these were made, around 40 or so. The C and D versions would see armour around the turret increase to 30mm, and side armour to 20, with improvements made to the engine. More than 100 units would be manufactured for these. Version E saw the frontal armour increase to 50mm, with additional armour plating. The commander's cupola was moved forward, and larger turret storage added. 280 of these were created. The F would be the last of the short barreled versions. The frontal armour was now fixed with a permanent 50mm hull, which increased the weight to 22 tonnes. This now meant the tracks needed to be widened. Now because the Panzer III's 50mm gun was becoming increasingly ineffective against Russian armour on the Eastern Front, their chassis meant that they were unable to support a larger gun. The Panzer IV's 75mm gun was able to do this job, but not with the short barrel's low velocity. To combat this, the long barreled version was created, known as the Mark F2 or Mark G. This would be the first mass produced version of the Panzer IV, as less than 1500 of the A through F were manufactured. In addition to the already 50mm hull, a 30mm plate was added in front for a total of 80mm of frontal protection. 
Some improvements and modifications were made in various areas, and the main 75mm gun had added penetrating power by the last of this version's production run. Also, the last few had brackets added for side skirt armour, and skirt armour around the turret. This again added assisting in protecting the weaker points of the tank. The H version would be known as the main and most commonly used. It had some 3700 produced, and included improvements to the cupola, a mount for an additional MG34 for anti-aircraft defence, improved communication equipment, improvements to the engine, and the addition of Zimmerit paste. The final version was the J. This was created towards the end of the war, when material was becoming increasingly harder to find, as well as priorities lying elsewhere. While all previous versions were upgrades, the J would see a downgrade in some areas. This included the removal of the electrical system which allowed the turret to traverse. Instead, tank crews had to manually traverse the turret. Not the easiest or fastest thing to do in the heat of battle. But the idea behind this was to allow for a larger fuel tank making its range out to 300 kilometers. Following this, no further versions would be produced. The best version of the Panzer IV was perhaps the H. It had the best armor for defense and best weapons for offense of any of these versions. In battles against the heavily armored Russian T-34 and KV-1s, it performed well. It was capable of penetrating the armour of these at most ranges expected for a tank engagement. But try as they might, with the continued added armour thickness throughout the war, the one thing the Panzer IV didn't have that the T-34 did was sloped armour. This was a huge advantage, and one which would have required an upgraded chassis to the Panzer IV to replicate. Ultimately, this didn't eventuate, with sloped armour added to some of the heavier German tanks, such as the King Tiger. But the Panzer IV chassis itself was extremely durable, and many other German variants, such as the Sturmgeschutz and Jagdpanzer, utilised the chassis as a base for their designs. All in all, the Panzer IV was an extremely good tank. It performed well and was deployed in every German area of operation throughout the war. As far as it being the best tank of the war, while the T-34 or Sherman Firefly often take credit for this, many German heavy tanks performed better still. For a tank, let's say the Panzer IV was right towards the top of the list. What do you think about the Panzer IV? Do you think it was the best tank of the war? If not, which tank do you think was? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.